Kulu speaks. The media chat with the governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Ulushola Songulu. This is our first edition. The financial storms are raging. The some are saying our sunny days are nearer than we think. Today, nations of the world are faced with multidimensional crises. Climate change, political instability, volatility of the commodity market, rising inflation, rising cost of living, and here in Nigeria, the situation is compounded by the challenge of the depreciation of the land. Let the governor of Lagos State, Nigeria's economic capital, Mr. Babadine Swan, seems to be saying, all hope is not lost. So we are here this morning to interrogate him on what he sees differently from the rest of us. In fact, I have this quote from him, and I quote him. He says, in times like this, hope is the sure anchor to our souls. Without it, our ambition tomorrow vanishes. It will seem that Governor Somoru has transitioned from just being a governor, a merchant of hope. But on this show, we'll prove what product is offering, what is retailing for the benefit of citizens of Lagos. I'm Ruben Abati from Arise News. And joining me this morning are my colleagues from other uh, media houses across the country and the states. First, for my um, friends from the media, Jide, my name my name is Achola. And of course, to thank all the Russians that have um, started to tune in and to, for us to have you know, a conversation this morning and for me to just give my views and thoughts and to explain to the citizens of Lagos and some of the things that we see, how we can indeed collaborate, work together, and build you know, a, a city and a state that will go with all of us an enduring policy, um, an enduring legacy that we all truly be proud of. And Ruben, I think you started, I mean, a very hard one. Um, you know, it's always very difficult to say one assess yourself when you're still on the scene. But like you said, as you fair and transparent, in the last um, four years and into seven, eight months into the new term. So what it means is that in my eight-year journey, today I would say I've spent about 60, 61% of my time and take 100%, you know, uh, view of it because we count our days. So for the entire four years of 1,160 days, um, it was not all rosy. It's not easy to oversee and to run um, the largest city state in our country, the biggest, you know, um, black city in the world, uh, the fifth, sixth largest economy, with all of its um, opportunities. There's, there's some problems. I mean, I told you, if, if a woman gave back on, on, on the road yesterday, why should that, you know, be a case? Because it would be treasure. So immediately, where all our 31 general hospitals will be given free child delivery, either during a normal birth or cesarean birth, we will, we will, we will take up the, the cost so that we reduce the pressure you know, on, on our people almost immediately. We are also working with them to reduce the cost of some particular types of drugs, hypertension, diabetics, and we can give a rebate at our hospitals. And give a rebate. So we don't want that to be thrown out. You know. So we're, we're, we're planning to give, you know, to work out with us that and give, you know, the rebate on that. That's number two. Number three is that our six health districts, we have six, we are going on have that before, right? we have six health districts which are headed by permanent secretary. Over the next three months, they'll be doing what called the health mission twice a week. On a health mission, you know, they put out the county, doctors will be there, nurses will be there, people will just come in. About a thousand people, two thousand people come and get a health check. You know, if you have diabetic, you have hypertensive, they check your blood pressure, and they'll give you medicines, you know, based on what it is that they, they realize that it's in your And to say that uh, one is not aware, to say that uh, we are not um, unmindful of what or where we are, and they continue to incense. So I want to, you know, also look straight in the camera and say that indeed. Uh, we all have a responsibility to do a better job you know, of ourselves. As leaders, you know, uh, it's for us not to give excuses, it's for us to be able to solve you know, our social and economic problems at, as, uh, you know, at, at the scale. And the 
able because what is the essence of government? Provide security, make life better for the citizens, and give them you know, a sense of belief and hope. And that's why one of the things that we hope that we will be able to communicate you know, at this at this point. So as a government, we cannot be everything and everywhere. But we can provide and create avenues for others also to join us. There are some things that are directly under our control, which I will talk about, but there are some things that I also can encourage other players to see us, to understand and to work with us so that the effect and the, the, the output and outcome will be felt across the The first thing that we have done, or we will be doing you know, from today going forward, um, is that we actually even want to start with our own public service. And to say that given the challenge that we see now, can we even be creative and have a flexible working hour? And so immediately from next week, when we're working out a plan where civil servants from level zero from one to 14 will come to the office maximum three times a week, right? Not that any form of government will be shut down, it will be all calendarized and it will be on schedule. To have all the tailors come the same day. It's very tricky. Give them the flexible work hours. The private sector can do it. Right? It's a time where we need to, as stakeholders in this country, we need to reduce the effect of profitability and keep life alive. Right? It's not all about shareholder value gain and ensuring that it is profit, profit, profit for our stakeholders. No. How about citizens that have been very committed? You know, uh, uh, of your of your goods or consumers of your product. At what point in time can we all you know just slow down and ensure that we can keep up? We did it during COVID. You know, as, as a city, as, as as a state, we all came out to support ourselves. This is also a clear cause. And, and what is happening is not peculiar, you know, to Nigeria alone, it's everywhere and every country has to, you know, think to come inside and think of a local solution. And that's why I'm using this opportunity to call all my friends in the private sector. Let's think of how to support them. This morning, I called one of them again. I said, I need about 100,000 boxes, spaghetti, indomie, all those. Of Just give me a combo, 100,000, not for sale. And these are some things that we're going to be doing. So if 36 of that will see in the next couple of days. So do something like that. Look at how you need to help people. To keep that opacity safe, blow the front. If you go to other states, so when you do in one state, you and it will drive 40 meters to what you do. But here, everything, all these are all interconnected and everyone needs to be developed. We're bracing up with it, we're working with the local government. In fact, right now, they've completed the plan to do 114 roads, you know, concurrently, you know, all the local government. And on that, we are also supporting with another 50 to 60. So in all, we should have about 180 you know, roads working over it. That also would bring a bit of discomfort. You know, because once we're also doing on these roads, you see that there will be closure, there will be you know, uh, 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 movement that will be impaired. So we need to plan all of these things in a way, in a manner that the country does not also reduce you know, the, the economic you know, viability of us. So it's hydra head. We are aware of it. We see these things, you know, and we know that there are things that has to happen. You know, and also because, you know, to also explain, you know, the water table that we have you know, in our state is, is also very important. You know, it's we not the state that is blessed with hard land. So very quickly, you know, um, our roads also can fail you know, because of the water table that we have. So that's why we need to spend a lot more, you know, preserving those roads. You know, the new ones that we're doing and they are heavy concrete. Labels, you know, a pair, a pair, so they have four or five, you know, big computers so that they can, we don't need to. That's so, present and the future. And to Nigerians who are saying the big power. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Well, first, really, is to thank all of you and to thank, you know, uh, my viewers. Um, it, it, for me, it's been a, a daily review, a daily assessment of. You know, I ask myself at the end of the day, how well have you served the Akoshians? How sincere have you been to the oath that you sought? How well have you ensured that you know the life of the people that you see on the street can indeed bring about policies that will make it better for them? 
and, and, and my, 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 my touch for you is, uh, is really for all of us to know that, yes, there are difficult times, there are hard times, but believe me you, at the end of hard times, you know, there will also be glor glorious times. But it's not just to fold our arms and believe and expect that the glorious time is just, going to, is just going to drop on us. No, it's really by hard work. It's by a sense of shared commitment you know, and the resilience for all of us to pull through, you know, even during those challenging times. And that's why I want to encourage all of us to say to ourselves that, you know, a call for a, a civil unrest or a strike or something is certainly not a solution. You know, so think to it. So you burn down a bus. That's the government assets that you've lost completely. You go down and destroy a building, you know. Who is the general manager of Lagos Television? award-winning journalist. There's also here Babajide Utitoju. Babajide, Babajide Utitoju is an investigative uh, journalist, historian, and polemicist. He's a uh, controller, current affairs, and television continental, TBC. I also have with me on this panel, Jeffrey Uzoma, who is from Channels Television, a celebrated presenter and program producer. Well, let me, before we start the conversation, also I connect the extreme presence in the studio with us of the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Dr. Kadri Mbafemi Amza. We select members of the Lagos State Executive Council who are in studio guests this morning. And they are also able to join by select members of the Fourth Estate of the Realm, the Business Community, Women, Another low point. Uh, it comes within the electoral cycle before we talk about current reality, and which is has to do with the stoking of our fault lines along ethnicity and religion. And that was big in Lagos. I don't think Lagosians saw as much response to that uh, as a build up to that election as they expected, given the fact that Lagos holds an excellent perception as a cosmopolitan city. We know there are indigenous, of course, but it's been populated with a lot of people. So I would like you to speak to that particular uh, scenario. We had people who threatened people. We did not see as much of the consequence of bad behavior as we should see. And maybe you would like to respond to that. Jeffrey, we did. We spoke up. We, we actually challenged people and were able to say to them that we cannot um, um, be defined by this moment. You know, in politics, everything comes in, right? And um, governance will stop at some point. And people feel something. And politics is a very dynamic thing. You know, people will view things differently. There were a few things that were, that were going on. At the federal level, there was a complete change of thought. You're right? And it was also at a time in which a lot more people, right, became, you know, uh, practical, um, aware, and wanted to have a say and have a view in government. Another low point uh, it comes within the electoral cycle before we talk about current reality. And which is, has to do with the stoking of our fault lines along ethnicity and religion. And that was big in Lagos. I don't think Lagosians saw as much response to that uh, as a build up to that election as they expected, given the fact that Lagos holds an excellent perception as a cosmopolitan city. We know there are indigenous, of course, but it's been populated with a lot of people. So I would like you to speak to that particular uh, scenario. We had people who threatened people. We did not see as much of the consequence of bad behavior as we should see. And maybe you would like to respond to that. Jeffrey, we did. We spoke up. We, we actually challenged people and were able to say to them that we cannot um, um, be defined by this moment. You know, in politics, everything comes in, right? And um, governance will stop at some point. And people feel something. And politics is a very dynamic thing. You know, people will view things differently. There were a few things that were, that were going on. At the federal level, there was a complete change of thought. You're right? And it was also at a time in which a lot more people right, became, you know, uh, practical, um, aware, and wanted to have a say and have a view in government. Or an emergency could happen for you to move to restaurant. You don't need 64 fire trucks or things because all the 64 will not work to work and clean them. But well, position them so that in the days in which they are needed, Ruben, I also tell you, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, there was a fire incident at the old Mandela's office. We have a fire engine that can climb up to 16 floors. We're able to bring the fire down 
the ones on Broad Street. But guess what? Once they wanted to come to the park, because of the behaviors of our people here, they have blocked the road, they have built on the road that leads to the park of it, the engines couldn't get there. And that prolonged you know, um, 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 the ability of our first responders to print down the fire within you know, uh, the needed time. So it, it lingered on for, for a lot of hours, and that led to you know, um, a lot of further damage on the city. That is how I want to you know, sum up how my, my journey has been. It's been ups and downs, but I leave it to that question. I leave it to all of you sitting here to you to write to the campaign. <coughs> but what we will do is that for every day we have, we will not shy and ensure that we put in our very best. We will ensure that the, the best, you know, is for the best amongst us. And, and like we keep saying, you know, um, it's not about who we know, it's about our sincerity of ensuring that everybody that passed away, right, gets the best of us. And we we'll leave the rest to, to history to judge us and to, to be fair, you know, to us. But we're not, we're not, we're not stopping. We're believing that we still have an, another opportunity. I want to thank the President for that. Things that we did not do well or that we did not do fast and quick enough let us be able to finish it up within the next three years. Now, program with regard to comparing generation or comparing newer. Some people say terms of their reaction, that those programs that they have seen look like an assault, one, against the poor, all this clearing of uh, under bridges, all this uh, closure of uh, business places, at a time when inflation is over 30%, and then the demolition of houses and some structures that some people say we seem to be targeted against non indigenous So these two issues. So we say yes, this intervention, but you know. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Um, just to also re-emphasize, the building that collapsed this morning, right? I'm sure you know that it's an issue. A real building actually collapsed. Thankfully, there are no fatalities. But if people were there, that's the end of the ghost story. A building actually collapsed this morning. So we're not we're not being emotional, we're being factual. A fire incident actually occurred three weeks ago, it's an 18 story building that changed the livelihood of a lot of people because of the carelessness of some people. It has nothing to do with ethnicity. It has to do with we ensuring that one, we can kill, we can put up the fire in respect of who or where you come from, have the capacity to respond to that call. <laughs> The assets that is not usable again. But guess what? The very next day, it still doesn't change the course. So that's why I'm going to plead with all of us to let us work together. As your incident commander, I'm giving you the commitment that with the committees and the advisory pool that we're putting together, it's a bipartisan engagement. We want everybody to have an idea to come and sit with us, tell us straight that this and this is not working. Do it this way. Let us share in, in, in the ideas that can ensure that we take ourselves collectively out of you know, the challenges that we find ourselves. And to also say that this challenge is not peculiar to us. It's certainly not by the fact that we're from a black nation or something. No, it's a global thing. There's been disruption everywhere. But when we believe that you know, um, hard times is for hard people to move, we will get out of it. And I want to say that for us as the government, we're committed. We're committed and we have what it takes you know, for us to work out of this together. Um, in terms of promises, it's really just to say to you that we will continue to do everything within our means, that the greatest rule is for the greatest number. Lagosians are resourceful. Lagosians are hardworking people. Lagosians are, you know, commercially driven self-starters. That's what I want all of us to build back. That's what prosperity can do for our city. That's what the Lagos story is all about.